Okay, this morning we, ha we have finished the lecture by talking about uh, the fact that when you take a look at the electronic structure of carbon, uh, you find the following. Carbon has uh, four electrons in the balance, so that means that there's two uh, singly occupied p orbitals. And if you look at the orbital diagram, what you actually find is something like this. You have that there's two electrons in perpendicular orbitals, no electrons in this 2pc orbital, and two electrons in the 2s. So from Weismann theory, what you would expect to find is uh, that carbon can form two bonds, and the geometry uh, around that carbon atom should be 90 degrees because the 2py orbital and the 2px orbital are perpendicular to each other. However, that's not what happens in nature. In nature, you actually have a variety of compounds in which the geometry around the carbon atom can be vastly different. For example, in methane, you have that there's actually four connections or four bonds to carbon, and they're in a tetrahedral environment where that is the angle 109.41. Uh, in a molecule like ethylene, you actually have that there's three connections or three bonds uh, with the atoms, and they form 120 degrees with each other. This molecule is planar, not tetrahedral. And in that molecule, which is acetylene, you have that there's only two connections uh, with, with atoms, and they're actually forming a 180 degree from each other. So the question is, how on earth can we take this electronic uh, structure and be able to explain all that? All right, so, so this is what the concept of hybridization of uh, natural atomic orbitals is going to allow you to do. All right, uh, let's uh, uh, take a look at the energy uh, levels uh, for those orbitals. Okay, that will be the 2s, and this will be the 2p uh, orbitals, uh, where this is going to be the x, the y, and the c. All right, so this is what the electronic structure is. And again, according to this, in principle, you would be only uh, be able to form only two bonds uh, with those two singly occupied uh, orbitals, and they should be 90 degrees from each other. Uh, what I'm actually, actually going to explain is uh, the hybridization that allows you to, to uh, figure out uh, why methane is uh, tetrahedral. Okay, and that is the uh, first type of hybridization, which we're going to call sp3 hybridization. All right. So the story is as follows. Uh, you can actually get this electron and then promote it right there. Notice that I have changed the spin to satisfy uh, Hans' rule right there. According to this, what actually happens is that now you have the possibility for four bonds. Okay, but of those four bonds, three would be of a kind, those formed by the two p uh, orbitals, and one would be of a different kind, uh, formed by the two s orbital. Okay, what you actually find is that, uh, well, those four bonds are exactly identical. So, so this, this simply is not the way that uh, carbon is bonded in that structure. Instead, what we're actually going to do to justify that those four bonds are identical is to mix uh, all of these uh, atomic orbitals to form new hybrid orbitals. Okay? So we mix uh, uh, the 2s orbital with the 2px, 2py, and 2pc to form uh, hybrid atomic orbitals, which we're going to call sp3. Okay? A couple of important rules here. Uh, the number of hybrid orbitals that you get is exactly the same as the number of natural orbitals that you mix. So here we're mixing one, two, three, four natural orbitals, and we're getting four hybrid orbitals. Okay? They're called sp3 because, again, you're hybridizing one s orbital with three 2p orbitals. Now, the electronic configuration would be something like this. And what that means is now that you're going, you're going to have four identical orbitals, and you're going to be able to establish four uh, identical ones. Okay, the only thing that uh, uh, we're not explaining with this, uh, with this first promotion of electronic configuration and then hybridization, is why the shape uh, should be tetrahedral. Okay, so to explain that tetrahedral shape, what we actually have to do is take a look at the uh, rules of the mixing, again, to justify that the environment or the, that carbon atom should be that of a tetrahedron. Okay, so uh, let me actually explain how that is done by erasing this. All right, the way that we mix these orbitals, uh, the way that we can explain that, uh, uh, that shape uh, is going to necessitate for us to actually take a look in detail of how those orbitals are mixed. Okay. And the way that they are mixed, the way that we uh, understand that today, is by forming linear combinations. So each hybrid orbital is going to be a linear combination of the 2s, 2px, 2py, and 2pc orbitals. Okay, so you're going to have four linear combinations. The first uh, sp3 uh, hybrid orbital is going to be something like this. You're going to mix the 2s with the plus 2px with the plus 2py 
and with the plus 2 PC. Okay? And here we actually have that there's a normalization factor of 1, 2. This is just the same type of normalization factor that we have encountered when we were normalizing wave functions earlier in the semester. It's not very important what this number is. Okay? The second linear combination uh, that gives rise to the second uh, sp3 hybrid orbital is going to be the following. S plus Px minus Py minus Pc. Okay, notice that again this is still a linear combination but the coefficients of the uh, combination are different. Here you have plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Here you have plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay, so uh, this mixing of orbitals in this fashion is going to give you a different orbital than that, which is going to be pointing in a different direction. And we'll have to justify again uh, why, uh, what directions they're pointing in. Okay? Uh, the third one is going to have this uh, combination. Okay, which is different from the other two. And the last orbital is going to have the following, uh, the following coefficients for the linear combination. Okay, we're going to mix the 2s uh, with the 2px with change in sign, with the 2py with a change in sign, with the 2pc uh, with a positive sign. And again, what has to happen is that when we mix the orbitals, the wave function on this uh, fashion, they should be pointing along a tetrahedron. Okay? So uh, uh, this is actually quite well explained uh, in a picture that I have added to your lecture notes for chapter 10. Just go to the end of chapter 10 lecture notes that I have put in Scholar. I'll look at the slide that has a page 626. Okay, right there actually uh, has a beautiful picture of how these orbitals uh, mix uh, so that they are actually aligned along a tetrahedron. Okay, I'm going to try to do it here in two dimensions uh, uh, to illustrate how that would work. Uh, but the real picture is going to be there in the slides. Okay, it's much easier to look there than again to draw here into dimensions. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is uh, try to combine these circles along the first combination here, and then uh, we're going to try to justify why uh, the rest should have tetrahedral uh, orientation uh, considering uh, that as well. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, this combination is asking me to do the following. I'm going to put here a Cartesian axis, Okay, that will be uh, the one of them. I'm going to call this the uh, plus y if you want to. That is going to be the plus x direction. And the plus c direction is going to come uh, along here. Okay. In reality, you know that this should be coming in out of the plane, but I can't draw that in, in two dimensions. Okay. So then uh, what we have to do is put all these four orbitals together and see how they add up. Okay. So that will be the 2s. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do for the first time is talk about the sign of the wave, wave function. The 2s orbital is always positive. It always has a positive sign. Okay? Now, the 2px orbital is actually going to be aligned with respect to the x, uh, uh, to the x uh, axis, like this. That will be the shape of the 2px uh, orbital. Okay? And now, uh, it actually happens to be positive along that direction, and this lobe is negative. You guys have seen in pictures of orbitals that when you uh, draw a 2p orbital, uh, it has two lobes, right, pointing in opposite directions. And sometimes those orbitals have different colors. One is blue and the other one is red. The only difference uh, between those two is the sign of the wave function. And this is actually the, only, the first time where the sign is important, as you're going to see in just a minute. Okay, so when we actually have the, two, the plus 2px, what happens is that, well, the positive part is pointing along the plus x axis. Okay? Uh, how will this be for the plus 2py? Well, what we'll, 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 do, we'll do is just add it around here, okay? And the positive part of the 2py orbital will be pointing along the positive direction, and the negative uh, part of the orbital will actually be pointing along the negative y direction. And the same thing would happen with the 2pc orbital, okay? Where uh, that will be the 2pc orbital right here. That is the negative part of the orbital, that is the positive. Again, that is 2p uh, c. All right, so uh, this is the representation of what we have right here. Okay, positive signs everywhere, which means that the orbitals are going to be pointing along the positive, the positive side of the orbitals are going to be pointing along the positive side of the axis. Now, the question is, uh, how do we actually envision the resulting orbital that comes from uh, mixing all this? Okay, so what you actually have is an orbital pointing uh, to the right, an orbital pointing uh, down, 
and an orbital pointing uh, like this. And to that, you, ha you actually have to add the two s. Okay, so what you actually see is that when you mix all those four orbitals, you're gonna have an orbital that is pointing to the right and down and forward. So we'll be coming out of, of the plane uh, essentially like this. Okay, so that will be your first sp3 hybrid orbital. Okay. All right. Now you can actually uh, try to do uh, what will happen with the other two, and I can actually explain to you a little bit how one of them would be. But this is again better explained in page 625 at the end of your slides. Let's actually do it for another one. Okay, so the second combination would be something like this. And the only thing that changes here is the orientation of the PY and the PC orbital. Okay, so, well, the PY, because it has a negative sign right there, what that means is that you're reverting here the signs of the orbital. So now the 2PY uh, orbital is going to be pointing towards the minus uh, Y uh, uh, direction because the, the, the sign that you actually have here in the uh, coefficient is minus 1. And the same thing would actually happen for uh, uh, that orbital. Okay? All right, so what you're actually going to have here is that uh, the orbitals you have to mix are going to the right, they're going up, and they're going inward. Okay, And to that, you actually have to uh, add the 2s. Well, when you actually uh, draw all those, what you're actually going to have is an orbital that is, again, again going uh, in that direction and inward. Very difficult to drive. I'm not sure how to do this. But in your book, you actually have a picture of that. And the key there is that the angle between the uh, prior orbital that you have drawn, the prior, uh, prior hybrid orbital that you have drawn, and the one that you have drawn right now is exactly 109.41 uh, degrees. In, in that slide, you will see that the, these orbitals are actually in alternate vertices of an octahedron, of a cube. Okay? And that is actually exactly what the tetrahedral shape is. All right, uh, you could actually go and draw the other uh, sp3 hybrid orbitals, the uh, third and the fourth, and you will see that that will complete the tetrahedron. Again, that is extremely difficult to do right here, but, but those uh, pictures that you have in page 625 at the end of your slides for chapter 10 uh, should be pretty pretty easy to, uh, uh, to follow, okay? If you've been, you've been able to uh, understand what the signs of the wave functions and so forth uh, mean. All right, so in the end, what I'm actually just going to do is, again, hopefully you've, I've convinced you especially after looking at the, uh, those diagrams, that when you actually uh, mix the S, uh, P, X, P, Y, and P, C orbitals according to those four linear combinations, what you actually are going to end up with is uh, four SP3 hybrid orbitals that are pointing towards uh, opposite sides of a cube, which is exactly the tetrahedral shape. Okay, this is how uh, one of the SP3s look like. And you have a one lobe right here and a tiny little electronic density on the other side. Uh, the second one would point right here, okay, sp3, okay, uh, and this angle is 109.41 degrees. Okay, the third one would be pointing uh, in this direction and a little bit out of the plane, and the last one would be inside the plane a little bit. Okay, so that would be your uh, sp3, and the other one would be pointing inside the plane and down. Okay, so that would be uh, sp3. Now, each one of these uh, orbitals has one electron according to what we just did when we were mixing them. Okay, and this, this was what we actually had found after the promotion and hybridization. Now, what we can then use uh, is this uh, electronic uh, configuration. This thing should be out, actually, now that I look at it. Okay, according to Hunt's rule, they all should be pointing in the same direction. All right, great. Uh, what we can actually do is use valence bond theory to uh, see what the uh, how the uh, bonding configuration would be uh, for methane. Well, what you can see is that once you have these orbitals for carbon, what you actually do is say, well, uh, this orbital right here is going to overlap with the one orbital of this hydrogen atom that has one electron to form a sigma overlap. And the same thing is going to happen with the rest uh, of the hydrogen atoms in that molecule. Okay, they're all due to sigma overlaps between the one is wave function of the hydrogen atoms and the uh, singly occupied uh, sp3 wave functions of the hybrid uh, atoms. Okay, so that's kind of the balance bond theory diagram for methane after we have explained what sp3 hybridization is. What we're then going to do in the next videos is look at sp2 and sp, which if you have understood this, sp2 and sp are actually far simpler in my view. Okay, so that should be uh, easy for you to follow. Okay.